we got it now. Hello, how are you doing, Marshall? My name's Marshall Bell. Hi, how are you? Thank Good. you for having me. Now, I've got to say, you are in so many iconic movies. Where does Total Recall fall, fall for you in terms of ones you're most proud of? Okay, so when I said um, probably number one, but, you know, here's, here's the little story. So I go to conventions, not all the time, but occasionally, right? So I put these pictures out, and there'll be Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, and you know, there'll be uh, some other, the Vagrant or whatever. And then there'll be Total Recall, and then they love that. And then they see Stand By Me, right? And the people who love Stand By Me, they'll go like this. How dare <laughs> you? know, how dare you be in Nightmare on Elm Street? And I was in both of them and within the week of each other, by the way. <laughs> Did you shoot Stand By Me? But Total Recall, probably number one, probably. Yeah, well, I was going to say, did you shoot Stand By Me in Brownsville? I, I did. Are you up there? Have you been up there? Oh, no, my grandma lived there. And like, it's funny. I have a funny story about that because Rob Reiner wanted to use her house for where they dug the pennies out. Yeah. And she hated Meathead and didn't know why he was there and slammed the door on him. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> and you came out later and us as kids we like, oh, man, i don't know about you oregonians <laughs> i'm telling you we us kids were never so disappointed so, uh, the other movie that was uh iconic in a in a con but it's more gets more watched than any other movie i was ever in um but in a you know it has a different completely different kind of an audience was uh twins oh yeah that's also huge now have you heard anything about twins three or twins no, I hear <laughs> off and on stuff about it, but I haven't really heard anything about it, no. No. Well, now, I want to know, this is an interesting character, George and Quato here, and I would assume, I've heard people talk about Quato and not even have seen Total Recall. So, aside from Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's got to be the most iconic character in this movie. That combination. Arnold? How about the most icon, one of the most iconic characters of all time? No, no, no! I'm talking about Quato and George. Oh, you mean? Oh, well, you mean George and? Well, uh, he's a trick. Yeah, it's one of those tricky things that. It, reason for that is uh, the movie pivots on that a little bit. You know, all of a sudden, uh, Quaid is uh, in a different dimension after he's met Quato. He gets it a little bit better. Yeah. Well, in terms of the book that this is based on and the short story and the character, even in the script, I've read the script like way back when it came out, the character of George and Quato for your role, it's not so specific as to who could actually play this guy. I want to know what was the um, casting process like for you and how did you get this role? Because I mean, it's it's kind of so iconic that they had to really nail what they were doing. And there's not really a clear cut picture where they were going before they landed. Well, uh, I had, and I'm not sure he even remembered this, but I had met Paul because Paul was seeing literally everybody to cast Robocop. You know I mean? He was, he, he was, uh, he saw uh, lots and lots of actors to cast Robocop unknowns, knowns, semi knowns and everybody. And he, I was one of the people he saw. In fact, Michael uh, Ironside, he saw, I think. Uh, and um, uh, uh, so I, I remembered Paul and I remembered having a very, I mean, there was something about Paul I really liked right away, you know, I, 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 and, and I do, and I've had him in my life and I love him. So, but, you know, with all sorts of side stories, but anyway, so uh, I, I got, uh, I had just, Twins had been, um, you know, I don't know. I, I was very new in the industry. I started very late and uh, I had done Twins and I'd gotten some kudos for that. You know, I'd gotten a review here and then people liked it and it was doing really good at the box office. And Paul may have seen that. And Arnold, um, you know, I'd had a nice time with Arnold on Twins. Uh, we, we, you know, we had a lot of scenes and, uh, I think probably I got to go in on this audition for George because there were a lot of people much fancier than I was much. And uh, because of that, that's probably what got me in the room. 
And when I got into the room, to be honest, I, I didn't have a clue what to do because on the script, do you say you read the script? Yeah, like back in the 90s. A line here and a line there. There's no sustained anything to do with that. There's a line of George here, a line of George over here, and, you know, there wasn't much George. And then uh, I didn't audition for Quato. I had to audition for George, okay? So when I went down to, um, to Churubusco, I was George, right? And then... Um, then the Quato character was attached to me and all this stuff. And I, let me see, I did those lines, but they weren't going to be the lines of Quato. And I actually kind of auditioned for Quato after the movie was in the can. And there were a lot of famous guys I was up against then. I'm not going to mention, <laughs> I mean, old icons that they brought in, you know, older actors. Yeah, when I was in trading places, you know, big that kind of people. Like Don Amici. Uh, yeah. Wow. Who I had to, uh, an hour and a half lunch with in a movie called Oscar at one time. And, and That's I'm a so Sylvester pleased. Stallone movie, right? Drop that name. I love dropping that name. Well, Oscar is the Sylvester Stallone movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was in that for two seconds. That movie, maybe it didn't do so well at the box office, but I remember going to see that with my mom and we both had a hoot at that movie. We thought that I was thought it was great. charming. Well, I'm very good friends and a huge fan of the director, John Landis. So, and, and who also happens to be a friend of Paul's. But, yeah. but anyway, so Paul, so I went and I did it and I, I kind of didn't know what I was doing in the uh, audition, but Paul had a little camera and he kept going, there, you know, and he kept looking <laughs> and I was... I was obviously not going to let that bother me because I just knew that this person knew what he was doing. And I'd started with an actor named Alan Parker, who's kind of like that. He used to do the, he used to hold the camera for the auditions himself too. So like I was, I wasn't unaware that that was what was going on. And then I just got hired to play George. I still didn't know what it meant. I had no idea what it meant. Well, there's still I've read it and everything. And I still didn't know in terms of it there's still like a conversation about this movie in terms of what really happens and where do you go with the ending since it's ambiguous you don't mind and, if i do this in my ear oh right. go for it i hadn't seen it in i don't know maybe 10 years and then i watched it again uh like last week and i I've, i decided that it's really like in his head this is a virtual vacation for this guy but a lot of people think this actually happened to him I, what what's your take on the overall story um, I, I've been all over that and I don't, uh, to me, you know, being in it and everything, it, 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 um, God bless you for whatever you think. I don't think it really <laughs> matters. I mean, I think it matters to you and that's who I want it to matter to. Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I like being in it. I like thinking that it really happened because it was really friggin' happening to me when they glued that stuff on me for nine hours. So I'm all in for it really happened. <laughs> well, I was going to say between like trying to figure this, uh, the recording thing out on this, I was going to say Paul Verhoeven kind of nailed this whole, what we're doing right this second between total recall and RoboCop with this zoom meeting. He, well, you mean like, you mean like he did this, you mean how he was he was photographed he was uh, uh yeah the whole thing yeah he kind of called the future i mean i feel like i'm in a paul verhoeven movie right now talking to well, in many ways uh he he's my favorite in many ways because if you look at his movies uh he he surprises you a lot and everything he does is a choice of his and i mean that might be a mistake but he made that choice it wasn't it wasn't like he failed to do what he wanted to do or anything. And uh, you're right. Well, I was going to say, we started talking about the 4K edition, which we're here to promote right now. And I, I want, I know you haven't seen it or what's on it. You didn't participate in any will of the- Will I get one? Movies, right? hmm? Do I get one? Uh, you will have to ask the other guys for that. <laughs> I'll send you one. <laughs> Merry Christmas. If I get hands on one, I don't know. But- um, I was gonna say, uh, what do you think about this as the perfect Christmas gift to get in your stocking and open up and I watch with the family? I think it's for 
for many, many people, more than you might imagine, it would be a great Christmas gift. Well, it's funny because, I mean, back when this came out, it was considered really hard violence and graphic. And it was up there with RoboCop where, you know, parents were like, oh, don't let your 12-year-old kid go see it. And now well, we're what seeing you do, stuff. If you're going to go to a Paul Verhoeven movie, uh, dude, <laughs> all bets are off for that. Well, I mean, for today, it seems pretty tame in terms of like opening up and watching on Christmas morning. It's I know, I'm just talking seen. in the day, though. I mean, yeah. he, and he lays it on. Uh, and, and and I saw a movie he made in Holland later on where he dumps a bucket of you-know-what on some girl. And, you know, I mean, he gets out there. What movie was that? Black Book. Black Book? I haven't seen that. Oh, I loved it. I mean, it's kind of like, did you ever hear, hear of a movie called lives of others with this wonderful german actor who died right afterwards did this wonderful job it was about the stasi listening in on people's phone calls and stuff like that no well he had all that cast in black book and it was about that period but it was about the nazi period and uh there was a girl who was a collaborator and you know they <laughs> and there ain't anything paul won't do <laughs> i mean actually l uh you know he he was he gets out there man he like you know well, what was it like seeing Quato for the first time when they got this finished effect? Because, I mean, it's a practical effect, which we don't get a lot. Anyway, you you got to understand, I was in the makeup chair for about nine hours. I mean, I went out and did the did all the preparatory work for it with Rob Botin, the great, you know, guy who oh. made it. And, uh, and I still didn't have a concept of, I had no idea about any, I mean, it was all like a new. <laughs> and then when I go out there and I, ha I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning for a 12 o'clock call because they had to spend nine hours making, you know, the first day getting that thing to blend into my body and everything. And, um, and so then when I put the thing, you know, I had to put on a harness and everything. It weighed about 80 pounds more. So I was in this gizmo that weighed 80 pounds that was, you know, holding me over like this. And to see it for the first time, uh, it blew my mind. It blew my mind, actually. Wow. So when you well, find I didn't see it until I saw it. That's what I was going to say. You didn't see it until you saw the movie. Yeah. And I mean, I had to make friends with it really fast because there was no <laughs> sleep being had that week. And and, you know, you're not going to, if you feel like it's an alien fixture on you, that's not really going to work for camera. So yeah. I had to make friends with that thing being on me. And man, <laughs> there was a lot of love that went into that. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh man, I bet. Now, what was it like seeing it that first time? Were you at the premiere and everybody's kind of saw it for the well, very first time? I first saw the movie, you mean? Yeah. Well, you know that we, we were, it was a, yeah, a fancy evening, you know, it was a, yeah, I was at the premiere and. There was Arnold and after clubs and stuff like that. So yeah, it was great. I know I, uh, I uh, the reason I liked it uh, uh, objectively as a movie is because it brought funkiness to space, which hadn't been there really before. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like uh, Star Wars slicked out and everything. It was funky, and then there was ugliness even. Well, I was gonna say that. This is like right on the precipice of where they started doing more CGI movies and more green screen. And uh, his second one was the state of the art uh, initiator of CGI Starship Troopers. Yeah. That's where they really got going with it. Well, I was going to say, but at that time, this was right really where it started, where an actor would be in a movie and kind of not know exactly what they were going to see on screen. Well, this was puppets. This was puppeteers and wires hooked up to Quado and everything. So you knew kind of, you knew what it was going to look like, or were you shocked when you actually saw the finished product? Like with all of the background, all of the effects, not just the puppet. Well, I mean, when I saw it, I, I, I just thought the expertise involved in making it look, it looked better than I thought it felt. <laughs> it looked way better than I thought it was being. <laughs> yeah. Now between, the interactions between George and Quato, how do you figure that out? I mean, he was my brother. He was my uh, older brother, really, kind of. I mean, that's how I looked at him. I don't and you kind of really be my older brother, but that's how I looked at him. <laughs> and so you kind of played into that for real on, on set. And that's kind of. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was I carried him around. You know, I had a big I had a, a, a body pad 
that made me look like uh, I, you know I was carrying something around throughout the whole movie. So I was so um, yeah. I mean, I, he was with me the whole time I was doing anything. Well, in terms of that, what point on set did you look around and go, "Yep, we're making a classic that's going to stand the test of time"? Because this really is one of those special movies that everyone discovers, finds, and just keeps watching. It's never kind of really left even the the cultural conversation. I would say. I never know about anything like that. I thought this is, a, you know, there's never been a science fiction movie like this. Um, maybe nobody, I mean, it's possible to know whether people like it or not. I hope they do. It's Arnold and I hope they do. And so uh, I, I, when they did, I wasn't surprised. No, I thought it was a very interesting movie. Yeah. Now, how often do you go back and, and rediscover it and rewatch it for yourself? Or is that something I know a lot of actors don't ever do that? Uh, I do it. You know, I have a kind of a love for it. So I do it, you know, once ever. Well, I, I won't I don't know exactly, but I watch it as much <laughs> as I watch Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, and that's a lot. Well, I've seen Total Recall way more times than Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> well, but you're a younger man than I am. Yeah, not by much. By the way, I want to tell you, if I'd have known you were going to wear a tie, I would have too. I totally am <laughs> in for that. Oh, that's all right. Um, no, I was going to say, in terms of watch, do you watch Total Recall more than Stand By Me? Or are those kind of equal ground there? Because I think for you, that's the other big one for me. But I mean, also. Well, I mean, I think they about the same. I mean, I think more, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a longer... Um, Friendship, let's say, uh, uh, and I loved Rob. Uh, boy, was I lucky to be able to work for Rob Reiner. What a wonderful director. But I just, I, I saw more of Paul than I did of Rob. No, I don't want to disparage any movie, but when they did the the remake, I know a lot of Total Recall people didn't want any to see that, didn't want to believe it existed or whatever. What was kind of your take on that and what they well, did? I didn't that? ever see it, but then I'm, it's hard to get anything. I didn't see it and then I was going to kind of see it and then it was kind of gone and I'm sorry mm -hmm. that it didn't work. That's how I feel about it. I'm sorry it wasn't a big hit. Well, I've never seen it either. And after watching this, I wanted to go back and actually watch it. I mean, yeah. I've been just well, watching well, it. We could go together. <laughs> yeah, it was more fresh in my mind. I wanted to see exactly what was there. Now, um, I, I got to wrap this up, but I wanted to ask one last question. If if I get my my Stand By Me store open there in Brownsville, are you going to come visit? I mean, I like that area, and so I guess the answer would have to be yes. And I'm all I'm all about Oregon. I like Oregon. Well, and maybe I'll cut you into uh, some of the um, the stock. It's going to be huge. Well, I mean, if you get some, I mean, you get, let me sign a few things there. Oh yeah. And well, then, you know, you know, you get ten. You know, we'll sign a few things for you. What really surprised me is I hadn't been back there in a while and I went back uh, last Christmas and it's cold out and there were three different Stand By Me tours walking around. Hey, it was a charming town. I mean, I remember it well. It was a, you know. Yeah, well, I was just surprised that there was like that many people there specifically for, I don't think they'd be there for any other reason. <laughs> but It just surprised me how many people on a cold Wednesday. It that, should have been you, Gordy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the friends that wrote that uh, are, to, are friends of mine to this day. Yeah. So, uh, well, they didn't. I hope I didn't bore you too much on this. Me? God, no. I'm ex so excited to get to talk to you. You're really one of my favorite actors. I mean, you're in so many great movies that I love. So it's like, thank yes. you. So, but like I said, I'm a tie wearer. So if I'd have known, <laughs> I'd have put on a tie. It's hard being in the house all the time, you know? Yeah, I get that. I was in a tie all of the, just until now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just because I don't want to be in the house. Yeah. Well, it, it transports me somewhere that's not, you know, the living room anymore. I mean, for me, me personally. I like, had a suit right. on for three days in a row of, yes. from Thanksgiving on. Now exactly. it's got moth holes in it and we took it to get it clean. But <laughs> Well, anyways, they, I'm sorry about the little uh, technical issues there at the beginning because I wasn't sure what was going on with this. That's part of the territory. Yeah, but I, I'm getting it worked out. I thought I had it all covered, but then they switched the Zoom operators on me. Uh-oh. 
So, I don't know how that side of it. I had no nothing about, but I know how to kind of get on. And I yeah. just was worry. I always worry that it's this is going to be the time it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. See, today I was like, oh, I've got this. It's a breeze. It's going to work fine. I've done this like ten times now. But then it didn't work. So. Never stop worrying. That's <laughs> that's the point. Anyways, thanks so much for coming on and chatting. You're great. It was great to talk to you. And we'll see you I'll later. Definitely come to Brownsville. Okay, I I'm gonna set that up, man. Opening this great store there. It's gonna be amazing. Cool. I mean, I I wouldn't mind if you got me on Alaska and got me up there, but I, I but I'll come. Hey, hey, if we did something <laughs> like that, of course we'd get you up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye, dude. Am I am I gonna leave you now? I'm gonna leave you. Bye. Okay, I'm sad. <laughs>